My name is Asik and G. King Sinos, assistant priest at St. Anne's Church in Fox Hill, Bahamas. You do not always have me. Words from St. John's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus went to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from death. They prepared dinner for him there, which Martha had served. Lazarus was one of those who was sitting at the table with Jesus. Then Mary took a whole pint of a very expensive perfume made of pure nard, poured onto Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The sweat the sweet smell of the perfume filled the whole house. One of Jesus' disciples, Judas Iscariot, the one who was going to betray him, said, Why wasn't this perfume sold for 300 silver coins and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He carried the money bag and would help himself from it. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Let her keep. Let her keep what she has for the day of my burial. You will not always, you will always have the poor people with you, but you will not always have me. Our response to all that Jesus has already done for us should be an offering up of our greatest treasures to him. During this time of the year, we have been called to focus on the anointing of Jesus in an act of extravagant worship and oblation to the Savior of the world. Our service and sacrifice is meant to do just that. You will not always have me. Jesus had made quite a stir. The religious leaders are not fond of him at all. In fact, on several occasions, they have tried to arrest him, but with no success. The reason that the religious leaders' leadership are so upset with Jesus is because he, among other things, have claimed to be God. Of course, this, is a fact, this fact is true, and it is one of the things that John, St. John, the author of this gospel, is most concerned about. Not only is Jesus proclaiming with words his divine sonship, but he is producing signs that point to his ultimate ministry, mastery over death. This event that takes place just before our passage for today, is entirely concerned with Jesus' ability to defeat death. From this point onward, in the Gospel of John, the religious leaders seek not just to have Jesus arrested, but to have him killed. The extravagance poured on Jesus. Jesus and his followers enter the house and are greeted and seated down to a banquet. Jesus tells us that Martha and Mary, Lazarus' sisters, are there as well. Martha, for her part, is busy serving the guests. Mary, on the other hand, has a different kind of service in mind. While they are all reclining at the table, Mary approaches Jesus and pours, anoints his feet with costly perfume. St. John wants us to understand that Mary's actions are, if not a direct result of the event that transpired in chapter 11, at the very least, a link in the significant chain of events that will lead to Jesus' death. Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, which was a significant sign of his power and persuaded many to follow him. This worries the religious leaders so much 
that they are so set on eliminating Jesus from the scene. As a result, anointing, as a result, Mary anoints Jesus' body for burial. Let us pause here and next time we look at the second part of this presentation. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.